Hey guys, welcome to the second video in our image processing series. If you remember in the last video, which was actually the first video, we set up this image struct and we use the STB image and STB image write libraries. So if you haven't seen our first video, make sure you check that out and get the links to the STB image libraries in the description of that video. Uh, but today we're actually going to be making our first filter, which is going to be the grayscale filter. So a very simple one, but a good one to have. So let's get right into that. All right, so first thing we will do here is declare our grayscale functions in the .h file. And the reason I say functions plural is because we'll actually be defining two grayscale functions today. There are many ways to define them. But the two we will be covering are the grayscale average, as I call it, and the grayscale loom, as I call it. And so basically what the grayscale average is, is kind of the straightforward approach to grayscale. We're just going to sum up the red, green, and blue channel values and then average them, so divide by three. And then we'll take that average and set each of the channels back to that value, creating a gray pixel. And then the second function, the grayscale loom function, is basically the same, except we take a weighted average in a special way such that it preserves the human perceived luminance of the image. So don't worry if that sounds too complicated. We're going to get more into that later. We'll, let's just start with the grayscale average function for now. Okay, so we can begin this function definition by checking the number of channels. If the number of channels is less than three, then we're basically going to assume that the image is already grayscale and we're just not really going to process it with our filter at all. So we can print this little message to the console just in case this ends up happening in our code. Uh, but otherwise, we do want to process the image so we can start by looping through our pixel data. And when we do that, we want to take each pixel values, R, G, and D channels and average them out into this gray integer. So to do that, we're going to take data i, which is the red channel, data i plus 1, which is the green channel, and data i plus 2, which is the blue channel, and we're just going to divide it by 3. And then we can use memset to just set each of those channels to the same gray value. So we want to start at data plus i, which is the current pixel we're on, and then we'll set all of them to gray. Yeah, so that's basically it for this function. As I said, it's very simple. We can go ahead and hop over to main.cpp now to test this. And to do that, we'll just create a copy of our test image and then grayscale it. And then we can write that to a file. So once we got that done, we can go ahead and run that if we hop over here. And as you can see, our image was created right here. And it is, in fact, a grayscale version of our original image, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we can kind of start talking about our second grayscale function, which is going to be the grayscale loom function. So to explain this grayscale loom function, it'll be helpful if we pop over to the Wikipedia page for grayscale and get some helpful background. So. The first thing you notice when you get here is three main equations. The first equation at the top is what's called gamma expansion. And basically it converts from a nonlinear form that image files are often stored in to the linear form, which is what we want to work with. So that's just linear red, green, and blue channel values. And once we get that, which STB image actually does that for us, so we don't even have to worry about that first equation up there. We just need to use a second equation, which is the weighted average or linear combination of each of the channels to get our gray value, which is called Y linear on this page. And then that last function, that's actually called gamma compression, which again, STB image does that for us. So we don't actually need to worry about converting back to the nonlinear form. And just to show you that STB image does actually support conversion out of this nonlinear form. If you look over here in the STB image file, we see that they say they assume a gamma value of 2.2. And you can actually modify this gamma value, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to stick with the standard one. So we can go ahead and hop back over to the code and get into our grayscale loom function definition. So we can start off the same exact way. And actually, 
our main block of code is going to be mostly the same. The only thing we need to change is this uh, gray value. Instead of averaging the three, we need to take our weighted linear combination, so our weighted average with those values we got from Wikipedia. And the reason they're different is because humans actually see the frequency of green as a lot brighter than other frequencies. So that's why you see that green has the highest weighting there. Uh, red has the next highest and blue has the least. So it basically just kind of matches how humans perceive different colors. And so that's all we're changing, just that gray value. And then we can go ahead back over here, test it. This time we're testing gray loom. So we can go ahead and change all these names to gray loom. And then we can go ahead and run it and see how it looks. All right, we have our image right here. Here's our old gray and here's our new grayscale image. So as you can see, uh, certain spots are a little bit brighter. In my opinion, the grayscale loom looks a lot better. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments and we'll catch you guys in the next image processing video. See ya. Thank you.